The following program has been generously funded by the Patterson Foundation. everyone, welcome to another episode of This Book is Cool. My name is Beth Duda, and I'm the director of the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading. Have you ever looked at the night sky and wondered what's out there? Well, if you have, we've got a fabulous book for you today. It's called What's Out There, a book about space. This book has all kinds of interesting information about the things that we can see in the night sky. Some of the things we can see with just our eyeballs and other fascinating things we can see by looking through telescopes. And then other even more incredible things can be seen by looking through powerful telescopes at places like planetariums. It brings me to our very special guest that we have with us today. From the Bishop Museum and Planetarium, we have Declan Sheehy. Hi, Declan. Hey, Beth, how are you? I'm good, how are you? When we can do it in person, but this works for now. It does. And, you know, as we were, were thinking about a book and thinking about outer space, all of us immediately thought of the wonderful planetarium that you have at the Bishop. Yeah, it's a fantastic facility and we're delighted that we can do so many science programs and STEM programs. And sneak peek, we are upgrading the planetarium in the next couple of months. So when we come back, it'll be even better and brighter than before. Wonderful, that's great news. So is outer space something that you've had an interest in for a long time? Uh, yes, um, I actually, when I was a kid, I'd I remember watching Apollo 11 and thinking, I want to grow up to be an astronaut, which was aspirational, and living in Ireland turned out to be a little more difficult than one would have thought. You talked about growing up in Ireland? Yes. That's um, a, a long way from here, but one of the things I love about outer space is you can look at the sky in Ireland and see many of the same heavenly bodies that we can see from Florida. Correct. It's just a little different perspective and a little more northerly, but uh, yeah, it's interesting because, you know, all across planet Earth, we are looking at basically the same sky if we're in the northern hemisphere and a slightly different sky if we're in the southern hemisphere but it's all about perspective, but we all actually see much the same things, the same planets, the same stars in lots of cases. So that makes it fun. When I was young, I used to like to go out into my backyard and look for star constellations that I could identify. Sometimes I would see the Big Dipper or the Little Dipper or try and find some of those other. Um, and then someone shared with me that some of the things that I thought were very bright stars were actually planets, and that we could see planets with our, our naked eye sometimes, which was amazing to me. It's incredible with the, the, the Greeks, particularly in ancient times, looked up at the heavens and saw all of these points of light and decided to make beautiful artistic representations of what the, what the constellations perceived for them and truly artistic and it's beautiful. And when you come back to the planetarium, we display all of those, the stars first, and then we overlay the graphics. And it's pretty amazing that how they, some of them, how they come up with, when we look at Aquarius or Gemini particularly, and it's, it's truly, it's truly fascinating as to how they made those connections. But as you keep looking, you understand why. And of course the ancient Greeks had, 
no idea that these stars are not sitting all in the same plane, but one could be close to us and one could be very far away from us. And to your point, one may not be a star at all. It could be a planet. And of course we have, you know, we have the brighter lights in the sky. Right now you can see Venus really, really well. It's the brightest, it's the third brightest object in the sky after the sun and the moon. So it's highly visible. Um, but we can see Mars, we can see Jupiter, we can see Saturn with the naked eye. And that's, that's pretty cool. And if you have a small telescope or a pair of binoculars, you can make out some of the moons. And of course, you know, there's eight planets in our solar system and we can name them all. But, and some people might contend that there's nine, but we're leaving Pluto out because it's an exoplanet at this point. Yeah, it's fascinating to learn all of these different facts. And, and this book, what's out there, a book about space, has an awful lot of facts in it. You mentioned um, at the very beginning of our Zoom call about actually watching some of the, the space missions when, when you were growing up. I know that mm -hmm. it's something that I did as well. Were you able to see the first man walk on the moon? Yes, in black and white and very fuzzy, but it was it was very impressionable. July 1969, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That first shot that I've seen subsequently of the Earth from the moon was pretty spectacular because that was the first time anybody had looked at the Earth from outer space, really, and seen it that way. And that's pretty, that's pretty special. Well, thank you for sharing your time with us today and sharing a, a bit about the Bishop Museum with us. And we're looking forward to the, um, the, the hint you gave us that it's going to be even better than it was before, because I have to say, I've always enjoyed it just the way it is. So to think about it uh, getting even more spectacular is very tantalizing. So thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, we're looking forward to it too. As, you know, technology is moving so quickly and we'll be able to do much more, not just on the astronomy side, but also on the STEM side and looking at forests and geography and animals and science. It will just be, it's a very exciting time for the Bishop and we're looking forward to being open again soonish so that we can welcome folks back safely and have them get a great experience at the Bishop Museum of Science and Nature. Well, thank you for helping us have a great experience today, and I hope to see you very soon. You too. Thank you, Beth. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Bye-bye. That was wonderful to learn more about outer space from Declan and to learn more about the bishop and what's going on there. We have some great words to add to our word bank from this book, What's Out There, a book about space. Our first word is the word asteroid. Asteroid. Asteroid is a small body made up of metals and rocky materials that orbits the sun. Our next word is orbit. Orbit is a curved path of an object that travels around a star, a planet, or a moon. An orbit. Our next word is comet. Comet is a chunk of ice, dust, and rocky material that travels around the sun. One of the fun things about a comet is that sometimes scientists call it a dirty snowball. The next words for our word bank are solar system. Solar system. A solar system is a collection of eight planets and their moons that orbit around the sun in addition to all of the comets, asteroids, and meteors and meteorites. So all of those objects make up our solar system. Next word is satellite. Satellite is a natural object or a spacecraft orbiting another larger object. Our last word for our word bank is the word astronomy. Astronomy, that is the study of the objects that are outside of the Earth's atmosphere. Astronomy. We have a very fun activity that goes along with our book today. It's all about making star constellations. So using pretzels and baby marshmallows, 
you can put together the pattern of some of the stars in the sky. It could be great fun to do a replica of the Big Dipper or the Little Dipper. Or you might find another constellation that you really like, that you'd like to make out of pretzels and marshmallows. And if you do, take a picture of them and send them to us. You can send them to connect at gradelevelreadingsuncoast.net. That's connect at gradelevelreadingsuncoast.net. We hope you'll also take the time to come up with your own idea for This Book is Cool. What book would you like to see an episode on? Select the book, select four or five reasons why this book is cool, and maybe some words for our word bank. You can send that along with an activity that you think goes along with the book. We hope you'll send your ideas for episodes or your episodes to us at connect at gradelevelreadingsuncoast.net. It was really fun to think about outer space with you today. We look forward to having you with us for another episode of This Book is Cool. Until then, keep reading. Reading is the key to succeeding. See you soon.